This video is looking at the formation of lipids, uh, these being triglycerides and some of their properties. We see that lipids are made up of two elements, a molecule of glycerol, notice the OH group down this side, and three molecules of fatty acids. Fatty acids are broken up into two parts. We have this section here, sometimes referred to as the Ku group, which is the acid section, and this long hydrocarbon chain coming off the fatty acid. Now the reason for these dots here is because this hydrocarbon chain varies in length, the number of carbons it has, anywhere between about 14 and 22 carbons long. You'll often see this fatty acid section referred to as the R group, this meaning it's variable because of the variation in length. We look at the formula for fatty acids. We can see the CH3 part here, CH2 with the N, this representing the variable length of the hydrocarbon chain, and then the Ku group here. These fatty acids join to the glycerol in exactly the same way as monosaccharides join together. Condensation reaction, water is formed, so we need two OH sections here to join together. These react in the condensation reaction, water is formed, just like when you're joining monosaccharides to form a disaccharide, and we see a bond form with oxygen in the middle, exactly as we would when we join monosaccharides together to form disaccharides. The only difference being that this bond is referred to as an ester bond rather than a glycosidic bond. This happens three times, one fatty acid on that HO group, one on there and one on there, to form a triglyceride because we have glycerol and these three tri fatty acids joining on. These triglycerides rather have different properties. We can see if we look over here, if the fatty acid hydrocarbon chain is saturated with hydrogens, that means it's full of hydrogens, there's no more room for any more hydrogens on those carbons, we said the fatty acid chain there is uh, saturated. If we see that a single double bond has formed between two of the carbons, we would say that this is monounsaturated. It is not saturated with hydrogens, it's not full of hydrogens. Similarly, if we see more than one double bond between the carbons, we would say that it is polyunsaturated. Now these fatty acids give different properties to the triglyceride. If the triglyceride is saturated, so a saturated fat, these fats are hard at room temperature, things like butters. Um, we can say, see, they only have the single bond between the carbons. We would say they're saturated in hydrogen. The molecules lie close to each other, which makes them harder to break. When we look at the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated, we see that these tend to be more liquid at room temperatures, so oils. They have this kink in the hydrocarbon chain caused by the double bond. We can see this represented in a simplified diagram here and here. This being a simplified diagram of an, a saturated acid, or saturated triglyceride, saturated fat, with the glycerol backbone and the three fatty acids, and this one representing an unsaturated fat. You can see the representation of the kinks caused by the double bonds with the carbon atoms. The fatty acids are the key to the energy of lipids. These fatty acids, these hydrocarbon chains, when they break, release a huge amount of, rather store a huge amount of chemical energy, and then when we break that, it releases energy um, at about twice the rate of carbohydrates. The properties of these two different sections cause lipids to form kind of oil droplets. The fatty acid chains, the fatty acids here, are what we call hydrophobic, that means they are water hating. Whereas the glycerol backbone is hydrophilic, it's water loving. 
Due to this, they tend to form these droplets where the water hating, the tails, the hydrophobic parts of the triglyceride point inwards, away from any water, and the hydrophilic, the glycerol backbone, points out, away from the oil, causing this lipid droplet here.